All right, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up Bloodhound. So we're following, you know, with the sticking to the Active Directory OSCP series here for you guys. Uh, as I gear up uh, for the exam myself, actually, and I know a lot of people ask questions about the Active Directory stuff, right? Because that's a, that's a huge announcement, right? That they're going to be incorporating that into the exam. So I want to hurry up and get these videos out there so that all of you guys that are pursuing it will have this you know, available before you take the exam as well. So yeah, Bloodhound, first of all, what's, what is it, right? So what Bloodhound is, is it's a nice graphical tool that allows you to very visually display and you know, enumerate, I guess I would say, an active directory environment. So, for example, the way this would work is you need to use it in conjunction, uh, conjunction with what is known as a ingester, a, a bloodhound ingester, most commonly sharphound or um, there's a Python bloodhound script as well that you would run remotely. But with sharphound, you'd run that on the client itself once you get that initial access. Which, yeah, that is the key. We're going to, you know, a prerequisite is we're going to need some level of access to the server, um, you know, as a user, whatever the case may be. And once we have the ability uh, to run commands from there, then we can use Sharphound. Uh, with Bloodhound, as long as we have credentials, we don't necessarily need um, any, like, Windows remoting or any kind of shell, per se. That's when we can use the Python Bloodhound one uh, in Jester. But uh, we're going to be sticking to just how do you set this up, right? Because I'd have to admit the installation is quite confusing. And it took me some time to figure it out when I first got into using it and everything. Let me, let me full screen this for you guys. So, yeah, with that being said, let's get into it. So if you were running Kali Linux, it is very easy or I believe even the app repository, right? Anything with the app repository, it's very easy to install this. So all we need to do is run sudo apt install bloodhound, like so. And that's going to automatically install the dependencies here. You see this dependency here, Neo4j? That is a database, uh, and it's a database that bloodhound will use. So that is a prerequisite that it will go ahead and install for us. So that's pretty nice. Now, it looks like uh, it's missing some archives. So let me go ahead and update my repository by running this app get update. See if we can fix this and I'll run it again. So now that that's done, let me rerun this sudo app install bloodhound and say yes to this and see if that clears up the error. It's always good practice to run a sudo app get update uh, prior to installing things from apt because that way it pulls down the most recent archives and I had just reverted this VM to an older state so that I could demo installing this because I already have it installed on the uh, the current snapshot. So that's why my repositories are a bit out of date. The update command fix that. So if you guys run into a similar issue, that's how you solve that one. Now, there's multiple steps involved when it comes to getting Bloodhound up and running for us. So first of all, is we will need to uh, start the database, that Neo4j database. That's the first thing we're going to need to start. And the way we can do this, we're going to need to do this with elevated permissions. So we'll use sudo. So sudo neo4j console is what you want to type. And that's going to launch neo4j for us. And on the initial setup, as you guys will see here in a second, uh, it's going to make us set a password or change the default password. So you see it's initializing here. And then when it's done, it's not going to really do anything other than say, go to uh, this URL to access the database in, uh, interface, right? So I'm just going to control click this to open it in a browser. And once it connects there, we can pretty much leave all this information alone. For the username, we're going to use the default credentials here since this is a fresh install, which is Neo4j. And the password is the exact same, Neo4j. So we do that to connect. 
And yeah, the important thing is you have to connect this database before you launch Bloodhound. So the first time, like I said, the first time, it will prompt you to change the, uh, the password. So let me just change to a different password. And hopefully I type those the same. Guess we'll find out in a second. Yep, and at this point, we're good to go. So now in the future, we just run sudo neo4j console, and then we're good to go. We can ignore that. We don't have to, we're, well, actually, we do have to log into the database with those credentials. So you might want to make a note of them somehow. Um, otherwise, there is a way to disable the authentication too through the config file, but uh, we won't worry about that for right now. So we don't want to kill this window here because it's going to kill neo4j. So let's just go ahead and open a new terminal. And uh, now we can just type Bloodhound because we installed it with the apt repository. So now we have it. It's in our path and stuff by default. Uh, if, if it's not for whatever reason, let's just take a look at where this is. User bin Bloodhound. Okay. But yeah, we could just simply run Bloodhound and that will start it up. And here is where, yeah, here's where we actually get prompted for the credentials. So... I'll show you guys like how to run it now that we got the initial stuff set up. Basically, you can just run that Neo4j command and then ignore that window. This is where you do the login. So remember, we changed the password. So we're going to have to put in whatever password we set for it. So once we do that, we are now in Bloodhound. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys, now that we have this running, how we can actually you know, collect... Uh, data that we can import in here and then get that nice graphical view uh, that this thing is known so well for. But let's start this over. Let's say that, hey, this is the second time we're connecting to it. We already have everything set up, right? Say you installed it and, you know, you, you did your work and then you, you powered down your VM. You're coming back to it. You need Bloodhound again. Well, you're just going to run this command once again. And you could pretty much ignore this window at this point. Uh, so basically, it's going to take a second for it to start up the Neo4j database. But, you know, once once it completes that, you don't have to go to this URL anymore. That was just uh, the first time setup thing. So now you should just be able to come over here and just run Bloodhound. And it should have your database showing up there. And then Neo4j and then that password that we set, right? So I just type that in, log in, and it should come up just as it did before. So yeah, hopefully this you know, quick tutorial here was helpful for you guys to get up and running very quickly with Bloodhound because it's not fun to troubleshoot annoying issues like this, especially if you're working on OSCP and the, the machines are you know, time consuming enough. The PDF is time consuming enough. You don't want to be battling your tools as well. So let me know if there's any questions down in the comment section below. And if not, I'll see you guys right in those videos on screen, getting into some more technical content. See you guys there.